Hey everyone, quite a few years ago, especially living at my mom's house, she has like a high water table, just like me, I have a high water table here. I run the dehumidifier in the basement nonstop, and one thing I don't do anymore, I absolutely do not keep cardboard boxes in my basement, even though I have a dehumidifier, it's dry, nothing's gonna happen unless the dehumidifier shuts off for a few weeks, nothing would happen. But out here in the garage, or I sometimes call it the barn, because a car literally can't fit in here. It's not deep enough. It's got a full-size garage door, but got like 10 feet of space. What car could fit here? Anyways, years ago I decided never to use cardboard boxes again. Just have metal shelves, even wooden shelves. I don't like having, but those are up high. It's fine. Down low, that's another story. Our water table's so high, you see these dark spots on the floor? If you leave something on the floor, moisture comes right up to it because there's no vapor barrier, obviously, in this concrete. Same thing in the shed. No insulation. Humid days get right in here. It grows mold on cardboard boxes, wooden fixtures. This is what was actually just sitting here up on its side, and it collected a little bit. Maybe if we move other things, we can find more moisture. Nope, not under that. I guess it's not hasn't have a big enough footprint. This is my FedEx box. If I'm expecting a package and it's raining, I put this by the front door just so they can put things in here so it doesn't get wet. But I just discovered here this little cabinet here. See, it's got mold growing all over it. That's just the start. It's just going to get worse. Now, you see that greenish stuff right there? The stuff they speak of as toxic black mold usually actually is a greenish color. It's not actually black. The thing is, there's so many varieties of mold. Some of them look exactly like it. You have no idea knowing. I'm not going to try wiping this up or anything. Although, this thing here is actual wood. So, when you have something that's actual wood, it's savable. If you have something that's made out of fake material like plywood, press board, sheetrock... If you have that cheap furniture that's made out of press board, you can't save that. But this stuff here, you can't actually save it with chemicals, so I think maybe I'll maybe try wiping it down. Although, do I want that problem in the future? What do I even keep in here? Not much. Look at that. The mold went right through. Look at that. Every... That actually looks cool. It went through every little crevice of the wood that it could find. It's actually kind of cool. But I was taught years ago when I had a mold inspector come in, because this place had quite a bunch of it, but that guy told me, mold will grow anywhere. It's not a thing about you being clean or not. It's about humidity and giving it the right environment. It likes dark places. This room is usually dark if the garage door is not open. And it's usually humid in here, so it gives it the opportunity to grow. I don't see any growing on this box. Right here, you got the wood grain going the other way. What's in this drawer? Barely anything. That can be rehoused. Extension cords that I'm probably going to throw away. They're covered in mold. Zoom in on that. Ew. Yeah. Those are technically salvageable, though. It's all over the headphones I use when I'm out mowing the lawn. New phones, you gotta put it into the charger. They don't even have a headphone port anymore. Yeah, there's barely anything in here. I think I'm just gonna toss this whole shelf and I'll maybe just put another metal one here. I actually have another metal one in my shed. Oh, actually, a matter of fact, you know what I have? I have a bunch of metal shelves that all these little things can fit on that I found free on the side of the road. I always shut the power off to the shed. It's this switch right here because I'm pretty sure water has got into the underground conduit and I just don't want the hazard of it somehow shorting out. So unless I'm in there, I just leave it off. The only reason I think that is because the conduit on its way to the shed goes to this plug, which does not work. It's probably just the ground fault plug is or the GFCI is probably broken. But this whole pole, it's crooked and very loose. I'm pretty sure it got hit by a vehicle because it's next to the driveway. And 
I'm honestly considering sometime, I'm lazy, maybe I'll do it someday when I'm bored. I need to dig this thing up, dig down there, the power will be off, so I don't care if I hit anything. I'm assuming I'm going to find a broken pipe, maybe I can just splice it and put an underground box there. I haven't done waterproof electrical work in years, but I remember I used to actually be fun when I did that for a job. You'd have like this big thing. You'd put the tube in and it would spin it like a hot dog at the gas station, warming up the PVC so you could bend it and shape it. Then you don't have to buy fittings to go around corners or guys who didn't do it as often. Like we were doing big pipe runs. Guys who didn't do it as often, you can carefully do it with a blowtorch, but it's so easy to burn it. But that's a project for another day. And here it comes up onto the shed. I, I don't think the shed moved enough. Who knows? That could be broken in so many spots. This shed, I found the receipt. It's been here since 2004. That's enough time for a cinder block or a building up on cinder blocks to shift enough to break those, especially when it gets really cold. Maybe I gotta clean the gutters. That looks like water's been toppling over. We got a step stool in case I gotta clean the gutters. You see in here, I have a lot of these plastic boxes. I bought those things in bulk. And so I don't have to keep cardboard in here, which actually goes bad pretty fast with mold. So I came in here. That's what it was. I found these metal shelves on the side of the road. I'm thinking maybe I can somehow secure those. Maybe I can ratchet strap it to that oil tank in there and put things on there. Although... I don't like, these things remind me of like a shower rack that you hang over the shower head. I don't like that. So I think I'm going to just relocate that stuff to a box. And I find free shelves on the side of the road all the time. I'll just find one. Or I'll just go to the store and buy a nice one. Whatever it may be. I, I actually, what time is it? Eight o'clock. No, I don't have time to go to the hardware store. We'll do that another day. I need to buy metal roofing. I want to put metal roofing over my firewood piles. I saw someone else doing that, and I thought it was a great idea. Just lay metal roofing across the pile, because I stacked them on pallets square. It's way better to stack it that way, I learned this year. You see this shelf that I got all my chainsaw stuff on? This heavy metal shelf? Got this thing from the hardware store, and I'm thinking that we can just... I actually have another shelf like this in the basement I'm not using. I've been wanting to put a fish tank there. So that's, I think I'm going to end up bringing that in here. That'll fit perfect in front of this whole oil tank. Big metal shelf, and that'll give me so much extra space. I think I'm going to end up doing that. So we'll get rid of this wooden thing here, which is basically housing nothing. Look at this. Sandpaper. Razor. These extensions are garbage. They're just covered in mold, although... Nah. Get rid of them. Torch and welding stuff. <clears throat> Bunch of spray paint. Paint thinner. Get it all out of here. This is so moldy. I don't even want to put it on the side of the road or give it to someone. That's not good. I could, I, you can spray wood with chemicals, and I have successfully saved things, but this thing's already banged up enough. It's been out here, so I think we'll probably use it as firewood. I, I actually should have a mask on when I'm near all this stuff. I should. I'm not setting a great example. I think I only kept this thing because it looks really old. Although, it's made out of, I don't know if things were made out of plywood way back then. I know I had a bureau I ended up donating because I didn't want it to get ruined. I thought I may have sold it someday. Maybe you guys saw that bureau I had years ago that I found when I was cleaning out the truck camp. Set on the back of it, 1920, it had a real mercury mirror. 
get this heater out of here. And I'm gonna think I'm gonna end up putting a nice heavy metal shelf here instead. It can free up a lot of room down in the basement. Yeah, look at all this stuff here that doesn't have a spot. You see, I'm just kind of piling things up top. All this stuff can go on this shelf that I think is going to fit here nice because these toolboxes can all move over a little tiny bit. Got this block of wood I use for... I just jam that under a wheel when I'm doing oil changes and stuff. These are garbage. got some mouse feces in there they got in here somehow or I probably left it open at some point sandpaper staple puller get this thing out of here any mold on this side nope on the back this thing looks like it maybe got wet at some point Mold is only going to get worse. And why we got this out of here? Good opportunity to sweep underneath this tank. There's also a bunch of wood there. I could store things that I don't use very often underneath here. As long as they're in like a plastic box, like I said. It's actually not even that bad. There's barely any dust. All the dust in here is like being tr mostly tracked in by the lawnmower. Let's go down in the basement and see what we got. This shelf here, I'm just going to slide out of here as is, take everything off and put it on the new shelf. This right here, it's barely being used for anything. Those couple things on there can just sit on the floor for now. Because I think I might put a fish tank here. Originally, that's why I installed this plug here. It's got its own breaker, especially for a fish tank. I put that plug in there because there were no more GFCIs in here. I also wired the dehumidifier has its own isolated plug. So let's just get this thing off. And I'm hoping I can get this thing fit this through the house without disassembling it. I think I can. starting to get chilly out again this year. Space heaters will be handy again. I always try to not turn the furnace on until at least October 1st. This week we have one day it's going to be down to 35. I hope it's not a frost. That is possible if it's a clear night. I hope not because I want a couple more weeks of the garden to live. Yeah, see how these shelves are loose? That might be a problem why I'm moving it. I might want to tighten up the shelves just by hitting all the corners with a mallet. And this thing's pretty light. It's just big and awkward. If I can get it on its side, it can fit through the house. Perfect. Ceiling was... If the ceiling was an inch shorter at that spot, I would have just had to bring it out a little bit. I see no problem with getting this out of here. I just have to... Get it around the corner on the stairs. Let's see if we can get this out. It's not heavy, just awkward. I can't fit through the door with it. This door is actually smaller than code. When I got the wood stove in that room, they couldn't fit it through this door, so they had to, they took the whole window out of the frame, and that's how they did it. I can actually get up the stairs with it, thankfully. The stairs are up to code, so I can walk alongside it. All right, and we're going upstairs. Just like that. I'm just hitting the railing a little bit. I gotta be more careful. Yeah, this is going to make the room so much neater. 
And tonight's perfect for doing this work. Tonight's low is like, I think 42. It's not down there yet, but it's close. It's like 9.30 at night. Let's make room. Get this nasty thing outside. And maybe we'll have a campfire with that tonight. This is heavy. This is anti-gel for diesel. We poured in that big tank right there. Because below 16 degrees Fahrenheit, this turns to jelly diesel fuel. And it's kept outside where it gets so cold. Last year we got down to negative 38 one night. I made a short video of that showing the wood stove, how it could barely keep up on that cold night. Showed the temperature, brought, brought you back in the house. It was burning it as hot as we could and we couldn't get the house above 68 that night. But that's fine. It's usually too hot for wood stove. Uh, that's not good. Barely holding on, I got like 10 sheets of glass. Why am I holding on to this glass? Can you guys think of a good reason for these? I guess I could put a couple on this shelf. They're not sharp or anything. I think they're made for a hutch. That would be good for putting tiny things on that could slip through there, I guess. Or I guess I could donate the rest. I don't need that. It's just something in my way. And this one's much thinner and different. You see it's got like little V shapes all over it. What is that for? Like so a bird doesn't fly through it? But those almost fell over and shattered all over the floor. Let's just sweep that corner real quick. I'm not going to be able to... Oh, actually I can. There's enough room to sweep under that shelf. I didn't even plan on doing this today. I just saw some mold. I was actually going to try just wiping it off as a just a band-aid, but that's all it would be is a band-aid. It would just come right back. At least with the chemicals you can buy at the store, they sell, I think it's called Mold X at like Home Depot. It kills mold, but it does not prevent it. What, what Mold X does is when it dries, it contracts and it actually squeezes and crushes each mold particle, killing it. I actually do have a chemical somewhere, but it's probably bad. It's probably expired because it only has a six. No, that's something different. No, I actually have one. It stays in the wood for its life. I used that in the attic years ago, but you can't buy that stuff. The mold company just, they gave it to me because they knew I had other problems around. I think it'll fit. If not, I can move a couple more things. And thankfully this has adjustable feet. The basement is the place with the crooked floor. Out here is flat. So if I adjust this, it should still be perfect over there. And that oil tank is, if the thing is eight years old, it doesn't have to be replaced until 20 years, so we're good. This actually looks way smaller out here. Perfect. Leave a little space so I can get my tools. Not bad. What's in this toolbox? Honestly, a bunch of things I could probably donate. 
This is actually a really good wrench. It's got somebody's name on it who was my dad's friend who died years ago. So, that toolbox there, I gotta go through that. It's, that's actually a brand new toolbox, but it's just random stuff in it. So, for now, I'm just gonna lift it up out of the way. At some point, I want to reinforce the attic here. Because things I don't use should be able to go up in the attic, but it's built there's just a single 2x4 every 5 feet, which is not to code. I wouldn't even risk going up there myself. Never mind loading it up with stuff. load this shelf back up with all this stuff. Honestly, for all my nuts and bolts, that kind of stuff, my idea there may actually work out, or at least for now, like this shelf here. Just put the pieces of glass there, I guess. A couple of them anyways. That's either a great idea or it's going to end in disaster. But that's tempered glass. You'd have to do so much to that to actually break it. And maybe I should be doing that up top because nuts and bolts don't need this big shelf. And now, and now that's actually cool having that because I can look at it from below in case I get too much stuff there I just can't see. I can always organize this better later. Just trying to get a little bit of stuff done. Most of these boxes I'm touching are so dirty. So dusty. I've actually been looking for this charger for years. It's for a special oddball rechargeable battery. This tiny little tape recorder here I was playing with when I was like six or seven years old. It's got a bunch of embarrassing videos of myself singing on there. Right here's some oil that's fresh. We can use that in the spring for doing snow blower, lawnmower oil changes. Go ahead and put a bunch of spray paint on here. Some people have told me it's not a good idea leaving spray paint in a building that gets cold. I've never had a problem with it. Even spray paint that's like a decade old still seems to work for me. And I got a ton of spray paint. I forgot I was going to do a project this year, painting things camouflage. I decided not to even do the project, so I got a bunch of paint for camouflaging, and I don't know what to do with it. There's a bunch of white, because it was supposed to be winter camouflage I was making. I was hoping it would blend in with snow-covered pine trees. So that's why there's greens, browns, and whites. And as far as gas, I don't want that falling off a shelf, so that can just go down bottom. And things I are barely going to use, I can just reach underneath that big tank. Look at this. It ran out of pressure, so I like pierced it with a nail so I can use it. Leave all my torch stuff there. This box is falling apart. I think I got a plastic box for it. A job for another day.
Just trying to get it semi-organized. So I don't find a giant mess another day. Whoever installed that oil tank did something wrong. I don't know if it's... The whole floor in here is a little crooked. Maybe that's it. When the oil guy comes, he can never fill it above what it is right now. I haven't, I haven't turned the heat on since this was filled. I filled it in the middle of summer to be safe. See that? It doesn't go up all the way either. Yeah, it's not filled all the way either. So this thing here holds 275 gallons, and they're only able to put in like 240 for some reason. Because what happens is with pressure, it makes a whistling noise through the vent. Well, it starts making, making a whistling noise when the fuel gets to a certain level, telling the guy to shut it off so he doesn't overfill it. But it, that whistle turns on a little too early. And I don't really know why. So we got a couple more things in here. Got to put my fuel stuff here. This oil tank probably won't have to be filled again if I use the wood stove. Usually, I, I don't let that thing get below half a tank just to be safe. And I usually fill it three times a year. So that's like only a tank and a half in a whole season. Last year, we only used like a quarter of it because I was burning the wood stove. The diesel furnace only had to come on when I was out of town. And the only time I was out of town was when I was camping. Maybe a two weeks total out of the whole winter. The wood stove wasn't running. Got a ton of screws that I use for projects. I got sick and tired of buying tiny boxes at a higher price, so I'll eventually use them. And what else can we fit on the shelf? Random things sitting on the floor. Hydraulic fluid and car wash. It has a spot, but these are too big to fit on my car wash shelf, so let's put them somewhere. Now I got this little metal shelf. You can just put this here. Maybe. I think there's a lot more stuff I can probably get off the floor now. Lots of random stuff that doesn't need to be on the floor. I got a power washer in here that doesn't have to be on the floor. Although the power washer, that's not staying out here in the winter. I know there's water in there I can't get out. So that has to go inside. Maybe I'll wash the cars one more time with that before winter hits. Let's see what else I can get up off the floor. Respirator for when I'm doing things. I should have had that on. This gloves. This for mowing the lawn. Headphones I have mowing the lawn. And I put this over them. Because with just the earbuds, you can't hear anything over the lawnmower. It's too loud. Maybe if I get this chair out of here. This chair is here. I can sit in it when I'm tinkering on snow blowers or whatever. That can go out of the way. I have this cart here that I can put tools on and rule it out if I have to work on the car or something. I'm just trying to get as much. This is a CB radio when I go deep out into the woods. It's got tape for the connection so water doesn't get in. It's a five foot antenna or a four foot antenna. I got this here for chemicals. A chemical sprayer. You just rinse it out between uses. I've used that for mold, vinegar, all different chemicals. Got some oil here. I was gonna make homemade stain. A lot of farmers will mix this with diesel fuel and it actually preserves wood pretty well. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll bring that for recycling. Trying to get everything off the floor, make it look a little neater. I bought this thing on Amazon for the truck at the beginning of the year. 
see what it's for. It's a skid plate for the hitch. Thought it was cool at first, but later on I just replaced it with a better metal bumper. So this is now not needed. So maybe I will donate it at some point or put it in a yard sale or probably give it to someone to put in a yard sale unless someone else wants it. So I think we organized a lot in here. Look how much more shelf space we still have open to stuff more stuff in that corner while hiding the oil tank. I feel like I got more floor space somehow. Still got some shelves over here that I can maybe organize a little better. Maybe. We got more spray paint up there. That can go over on that shelf right now. Wow, I got a lot of spray paint. This is probably bad by now. I'm not gonna hit it just in case. I might be able to just cut this and it might still be good. Maybe not, I don't know. This stuff smells absolutely amazing. It's for attracting deer and other animals. You open it up, give it a sniff. It smells so strong of corn. It's really good, the smell. It smells so sweet and yummy. It never attracted anything to my cameras though. I sprayed it all over some trees. Maybe we can try it again at some point. I feel like if I just spend maybe another hour in here at some point, I can organize this way better. It's way better than what I had there. Oh yeah. I can clean this anytime in here. Let's go and maybe have a little fire outside with that other thing. For now, I'm just gonna put this glass up here. I thought about maybe I could use that on top of like a 55 gallon aquarium because it's almost the perfect size. I'm assuming it's safety glass because it's made to go in furniture, like a hutch. Or who knows, it might be old enough back when it wasn't required. But if you try cutting safety glass, it's going to just shatter. There's no way around that. Oh, oh, I got more spray paint. This is the spray paint I, I'll actually be using in the next few weeks. I buy these bigger bottles of the Rust-Oleum. I have to spray paint underneath the truck before winter time because the gravel roads I travel basically sandblast. There's parts of the frame that are literally shiny from rocks hitting it. So I just get underneath there quickly with sandpaper and give it a quick... I spend a few hours doing that every fall. I still got like a month, I think, before they start putting road salt down or so. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of things I probably need to move in here and... That other shelf is absolutely disgusting with the buildup of grass and other debris that just blows in here. So I honestly leave this door open all the time when I'm home. So things blow in here all the time. I only shut the garage when I'm leaving. Alright, let's go maybe have a fire with that. I'll collect some kindling and I'll load the bottom of that little dresser with kindling and light it up. All right, everyone, we have arrived outside to the fire pit. This fire pit I just dug out a few days ago. The ash was starting to fill up to the top. It took like, you know, that wagon I have that's in the garage there. I was able to fill that up like four times with the ash. Just brought it out and spread it around in the woods after spending a few hours with a giant magnet. Because I have three fire pits. This is the only one I put things with nails in it. So I can go around with a giant fishing magnet and it just sucks them all out. It's actually kind of cool. Sometimes a pain in the butt too. Like there was a lot of nails in there. So I just stuffed the bottom of it with newspaper and boxes. I'm hoping it's dry enough that that's enough to get it going. Let's find out. You know, it's finally cold enough outside. Like I said, now it's in the 40s. Most of the time in the summer, 
when I'm washing my hands with the hose, garden hose or whatever, I'm like, I just love the warm water from it sitting in the sun. And as soon as you get the water that starts coming out of the well, it's freezing. But this time of year, it's the opposite. You're washing your hands and it's freezing. And now the well water actually feels warm. Because I think, what is it, like 50 degrees the ground stays at? Or maybe a little colder up here. Is that going to be enough? The newspaper and boxes? I open the top so air can go through it. Hopefully flames can go up through it. Let's see how this thing burns. Is it better if I have the flash off? I guess it's better to have it on for now. Let's see how that does. It's smoking out of the top just like I wanted it to. Just like I wanted it to. I'm hoping the flames follow through that same path. The cardboard hasn't even started yet. I'm hoping this thing's dry. I think it's dry enough. I think this whole thing's just about to go up. It's nice out tonight. Other than the occasional car on the highway. It's quiet. I hear crickets. Way in the distance, if you can hear that, I hear even, I think I hear the trickling stream. Yeah, I think this is, this is enough. I think those boxes are going to get this thing going. I just shut the flash off. I think we're good now. Let's back up a little bit so you guys can see the flames. Because they're probably going to get really tall. Beautiful night to sit around a fire. I love walking around it and just feeling it radiating on me. Yeah, I think that thing's actually burning now. The actual thing. I don't know if I'd call that a bureau. What exactly is that? It's got little wheels. Maybe an office furniture. It's old, whatever it is. You see how the flames are spreading down here on the bottom? I think the stain, or maybe it's covered in polyurethane, that might be what's burning there. Yeah, this thing... I ruled out putting it on the side of the road, seeing all that mold. So I don't even know if I could kill it, how it's growing through the grain like that. So this was the right thing to do. Yeah, it's burning. Look at the bottom of the drawers. Look at that. It's eating right through it. Yeah, this thing is so dry. It's also throwing so much light. Awesome. Look at it go. That'll be gone in no time. What happens if I shut the door? Not much of anything. That door is so thin I almost kicked through it when I shut it. That fire is unstoppable now. It was moldy, so that's my reason for burning it. I always hate burning old furniture. I have a small desk in my living room. It might actually be for a child. It's 118 years old, but it's really nice. I love how it's made. 
It's got a couple drawers that are hard to open because it kind of warped or something, but I like it. Finally got a car going by. It's been a little while. This thing's burning hot. Look at it go. That thing is so dry. Flames are getting huge. The fire is so big that it's like messing with the security light sensor on the house. It made the security lights turn on for sure. Yeah. I think it tricks it into thinking, thinking it's daytime for a brief moment. Then it has to go through its cycle of testing itself, which it does for 20 seconds at dusk every night. That actually looks really pretty kind of want to take a still picture of that. Look at the, it actually looks kind of pretty at burning. Looks cool. Oh wow, that's why the fire got so big. I just realized the entire thin plywood back completely burned through. There's no back of it now. It's just completely open to oxygen. Oh, the whole side of it's open, too. The whole side of it's open. The left side of it, nothing yet. Let me take you guys around back. The back of it actually looks like a scary face. Yep, see the side's gone. The back of it kind of looks like a scary face in a way, right? Well, I thought it did a minute ago. I guess not. The left side, nothing's gone through it yet. For some reason. Yeah, the only thing keeping it up is the corners. The corners are the only structural thing. Everything else was made out of thin plywood. That's why I'm surprised the left hasn't even given yet. Is it possibly made out of something different? Or I did light it on that side. It's bubbling up. It's getting close. It looks like the fire's actually going down a little bit now. It's, the flames aren't as big. It was the, the thin walls were burning like paper. Now that they're gone, we only got the bulk wood. The front of the drawers, the corners, the tabletop. I think the front of those drawers up top are about to topple. You see the drawer to the left, it looks like it's slowly falling out. I think it's about to fall. That drawer about to fall out. This thing burned faster than I expected. 
Come on, drawer. I think it it's gonna fall in the next minute. I think ah oh, there it goes. That extra air, look at it, just got really big. Got huge again the fire. Just feeling the camera. The camera's getting warm from it, but not too bad yet. I think it'll give me a warning before it just shuts off. How long is it going to take for the other drawer to fall out? That middle one might not fall out for a while. I think it because it's closed completely. It might fall in. In a minute, maybe I'll try poking at it. Or I just want to see how it structurally collapses. Once it collapses, then we can kind of concentrate it to get it to burn. How long do you think it's going to take for it to collapse or fall over? I'd say give it five minutes. Right now we're on three minutes and... Three minutes and 30 seconds exactly now. I'd say within five minutes it'll be on the ground. And look, the whole left side is finally completely gone. Oh, look at that. That was the framing of the upper drawers and the, obviously the middle drawer too. Just collapsed. Oh wow, I just noticed the entire tabletop is gone. That's partially what fell through. There's no top, it's all open now. It's basically just a frame around it. That might not even last five more minutes. The two corners on the right are almost gone. If I, if you really look into it, it's getting smaller so I can zoom in or get a little closer actually now. If, if we zoom into spots like this, you can literally see the nails holding it together. And the camera somehow shut off on me. That's one of the reasons I don't trust GoPros and stuff. People always tell me to do that and yeah, well, it burned fast. It's only now it's we're going on three minutes. I called five. It, it, I I don't know. The corners are very tough. Ah, I'm so pissed that this thing just randomly shut off. I don't know why. Why did it shut off? This phone doesn't have that problem where if someone calls or texts me, it stops. And no, yeah, nobody called me or anything. I don't know why it shut off. Maybe I accidentally grazed it or something. I don't know. Maybe it was the heat. I don't know. At least it didn't shut off during the exciting parts. Although, that was exciting. The center drawer just falling and shooting sparks. So, now we just approached four minutes. I th it's probably going to still be standing by the time five minutes come around, like I said. Although the middle's getting very thin up top. That might give, but the walls might still be standing. I don't know if, if I said topple or just collapse. I don't even know what counts. I don't want to poke it because I'll certainly knock it down. The base of it did barely burned at all, but that pile of hot embers is going to get through there fast. All right, it's been five minutes. It beat what I thought. Once the middle of it falls, I'm going to maybe poke it. Just waiting for that. Oh, the back frame just fell. Now it's just the front frame. 
You know, today I learned that new pressure treated wood is only as good as cheap stain. Pressure treated wood, if you bought it 50 years ago, it actually contained arsenic. That actually helped it survive for many years. Like, we recently visited that old Air Force radar base, and amazingly, the railings up top are still there intact. And those were put in in the 50s. Many of the railings weren't even rotting. Some were missing from vandalism, but they're in great shape. And it's always foggy up there, cold, wet. You would have expected them to rot faster, but back then they contained arsenic, which helped them a lot. And up there, they may have actually put creosote on it, which helps a lot too. Certain states, you can still buy creosote. It'll make things last forever. But it has unknown effects on the environment. They don't know what it would do. They don't know if it hurts anything or not. So, if you have anything like pressure-treated wood, supposedly it, it won't last nearly as long as stuff did back then. I only brought that up because this thing here, I'm avoiding the smoke. This smells like burning pressure-treated wood. It's probably the stain I'm smelling. Alright, the middle of it just went up. Oh, look, it just caved in. The bottom of it is completely engulfed now. The bottom of it just caved in. Everything's going now. It just flared back up. I see nails sticking out of it everywhere. Let's knock it in. Hey, listen to this pipe. There's water boiling inside it. It had more structural strength than I thought. That would have stayed up for a bit. All right, I think we'll leave it here, everyone. I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.